Hey guys, so you know that I have an academy and one of the features of the academy is that we have a daily devotional. I don't share those daily devotionals because I just feel like it should be the preserve of those who have um, subscribed to the academy. Excuse the noise. But the word that I shared on today's devotional was so... Um, it was one of those like fire in my bones. I thought I just wanted to, to share this with you. So it's from John chapter 5. And starting from verse, I'm going to start from verse 3. Um, in these lay, okay, let's start from verse 2. Okay, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season, other translations say time, into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of what, um, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty-eight years. I can't even fathom it, guys. Thirty-eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in the case, he said to him, "Will you be made whole?" The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another steps down before me. And then Jesus says to him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. There's a number of things in this that just struck me. Jesus asked him, Will you be made whole? So he sees him lying down in a public space. He is not crippled by the definition of things. What we see here is that he is lame. Or he's impotent, meaning he's sick. Okay. And the sickness obviously has made him extremely slow because he can by himself try to get up and go get the um, healing. But it's made him so slow that inevitably someone always gets there before him. And so Jesus asks him, will you be made whole? Now, the Lord was pointing out to me that the word will here is such a critical word. It is not the noun will. It's not saying, do you have the will to be healed? It's saying, will you be healed? Or um, do you will to be healed? Or will you do what it takes to be healed? Like, will you do? It's the transformation of that word from noun to verb. Like, will you act on the desire, on the will um, to be healed? And you could see now the man's mindset and heart positioning based on his answer. There you now see why he, you know, has probably not been healed yet. He begins to make excuses. First one being, I have no man. Um... And then when I do try on my own accord, someone gets there before me. So when I looked at I have no man, I just thought to myself, this says so many things. You know what it means to be in the world and have nobody. Um, so you're talking about rejection. You're talking about fear, loneliness. He might even at this point be talking about pride because I've come to a place where I don't even want to ask other people to help me. So I try of my own accord to get there. He's, 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 he's not translated his will to action because um, the strategy is not working. He's tried, and when he tries, someone always gets there before him. So what it would say to you and I is change strategy. Maybe ask someone. Maybe get closer. Stay closer. As soon as it's troubled, um, get in. Maybe keep your feet in the water. As soon as it's troubled or stirred, you'll be the first one in the water, right? So, so... <sighs> In the human eye, when we look at it, we're just thinking, because it's a crazy question. Why would I ask, will you be healed? Do you have the will to be healed? And, and we've gotten to a place, so many of us, where the trouble we're in has become a crutch. It's become familiar. It's not comfortable, but it's familiar. It's easier to be in that trouble. And so when we're asked, will you be healed? We begin to talk about how other people have not come to the party. We don't have help. It's become someone else's responsibility. We've got problems in the marriage, problems in the work, problems in the finances, problems with the children, but it's easier to talk about it than to do something about it or to talk to someone about it, hoping that they will be the one to do something about it. Um, and, 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 and it happens to the, to the best of us. It happens to every single one. I find that it's so easy to tell people what to do, but when you're in the crux of the matter yourself, it's as though your prayer language just leaves you. You don't know what to say. So I'm not blaming him. I'm just pointing out where the situation was. He was disappointed. He was hurt. He had given up hope, um, uh, etc. And so Jesus understands the mitigating circumstances, looks over all of that, and he says, 
this is what he's saying when he says take your bed up and walk he's saying i hold the waters in my hand you're waiting for an angel that stirs once you're waiting on man's protocol that says if you're not first in line you don't get it look to me i hold the waters in my hand the bible says that the hearts of kings are in his hands and like the waters he stirs them stirs continuous present uh actually it says turneth or turns it's a continuous thing so what he does is that he always makes the conditions as long as it's his time he will be making the conditions right for you it's not as uh, it was said in john 5 i think it was verse 4 yes that uh the 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 angel would go in and stir stir once at a specific time or season with God, he's not bound by times or seasons. And so when Jesus comes, he stirs. He continuously stirs the waters. And he's saying, the angel might stir once, but I hold all of creation and I stir continuously. He's saying, I took your place um, in poverty, in sickness, in affliction, in infirmity, in iniquity. Um, so you don't need to go through that protocol of you have to be first in line. Um, I'll, I'll always put you first in line. When I come... Imagine how many people were by the by, by the water and he walked to the sky and he says, will you, you, do you will to be healed um, after 38 years? <laughs> so if you will, right now, I can make it happen. Forget about what season it is when you heard that the water might be stirred or might not be stirred when the angel comes, doesn't come. I'm here now. I, the I am who stirs continuously the waters. So the message that I have for you today is if there is any way in which you are waiting on uh, angels or waiting on men to be angels uh, to come in and to stir the water or to take you to the water. Um, I want you to turn your eye to Jesus, the one who is the water of life, the one who holds the waters of life, the one who continuously stirs the waters of life, the one who gives you the unfair advantage of taking you, the 11th hour person, and giving you the same advantages of those who've been there from the first all the way to the 10th hours, giving you the exact same wages. Favor does not need to be fair. He's seen the 38 years. He's seen you in infirmity. He's seen you give up. He's seen you dejected, rejected, lonely. He's seen you come to that place where you're like, you know, I might have friends that I hang with, but when it comes down to the crunch of it, when it really comes down to it, I have no man. I have no one. You're not alone. You have him. And that's the message I've come to bring to you today. So I want you to look to him and I want you to trust that the waters are stirring continuously in your favor and that that thing you've had that has afflicted you for the last 38 or whatever your number is, I bring a message today. Get up, take your bed and walk. Shalom and God bless you.